One of the rules that is being talked about that's getting pitched this weekend uh, for an owner's vote is the hip drop tackle. Ooh. Ari Mirov and many others are saying the definition of a hip drop tackle that is being presented to the owners to vote on by the competition committee, A, grabs the runner with both hands or wraps the runner with both arms, and B, unweights himself <laughs> to try to unalive the other person's legs <laughs> by swiveling and dropping his hips and or lower body, landing on and trapping the runner's legs at or below the knee. NFL owners meet, obviously, this weekend. Shout out to Ari Mirov breaking that down. And as soon as Ari put that out into the universe, boy, defensive players from around the league responded quickly. Kenny Moore just used the trash emoji. Mm -hmm. Awesome. This is a dumpster. Cam Jordan said, basket of trash and trash emoji. Mm -hmm. Kind of a double shit yes. from Cam Jordan, who's been around the NFL very long time. Mm -hmm. Does a lot of stuff for NFL media. Carries a lot of weight, I think. Richard Sherman, obviously, one of our greats. Happy to see him seemingly in good spirits. Yeah, yeah everything good. Yeah. In a good spot. I just wish they forced the entire competition committee to create examples of how they expect a defender to tackle a ball carrier. I want them to act it out at full speed and create video for the players. At some point during the creation of that video, they will realize how insane this is. And then this tweet was quote tweeted by another OG who said, Cam Jordan, we've sat in on competition committee, Sherm. I wish there was former players on both offense and defense who played at a high level in there with power. This may create indecision and slow down a defender making an open field tackle or chasing a ball carrier down, but cheers to a faster game. You're turning us into the Washington Generals. Yeah. Is yeah. what Cam Jordan is saying. So now we're not allowed to tackle somebody uh, in a specific fashion that we're not thinking about while we're in the middle of attack. Now in rugby, I guess they have this potential thing in there because the way the game is, there's pretty identified where the runner is. There's normally people squared up. There's an entire system. They have a great game. Rugby is a great game, yeah. but it's not football. Just because you play rugby doesn't mean you're going to understand the leverage and tackling of playing football. I got to witness it personally with us trying to have numerous rugby players transition into football players. Incredible athletes. Incredibly tough. But just assuming that it works in one sport, it's going to work in our sport, is just not the right way to look at this. Now, will refs be confused as hell dry trying to figure out if it's a penalty or not? Is the NFL just putting this in just in case somebody does tear an ACL on a tackle that they can penalize it in the spot? How often are refs going to be looking for this or trying to call this? There's just so much questions around it. And if you talk to any player that has tackled somebody in an NFL game on a regular basis, they say this is the dumbest thing of all time. It's not like I'm doing a hip drop tackle on purpose. I am just trying to get a, ta a runner on the ground. So this started with some stats people on the internet. Oh, yeah. Oh, big uh, time. Yeah, you think so? Exactly where it did. And now it's made its way into a competition co uh, committee meeting where it could potentially get passed and be allowed in the greatest league on earth. And you're seeing all the football people come out and say, this decision's being made by people that aren't football people because you've never been on the field. You have no idea what's going on. How much is too much? Does this pass? We shall see over the next four days. Well, in the terminology, like, unweight yourself, like, isn't that what they're doing every time they sack a quarterback? So it's not allowed to you unweight tap. yourself to tackle a runner, but aren't they supposed to unweight themselves when they get a sack? No, like, wait, wait just a moment, okay? Different weight. <laughs> what you're doing here is pointing out hypocrisy potentially. Well, it just yeah, we don't need that. Okay, we don't, that doesn't happen. Competition committee. Never. Right. They, they would never do anything like that. There's other rules being pitched about challenging certain things that you're not allowed to challenge, like is a quarterback out of bounds before he throws. I think there's also a delay of game challenge that they want to put in there if the clock had struck zero, mm -hmm. which is interesting because all you ever hear refs talk about is, if you do know, mm -hmm. the back judge looks at the clock, looks down at the ball, so there's a half a second, a little bit extra. Will they account for that if that ends up getting reviewed? Also, in the final two minutes of the game and of the half, coaches still being able to challenge is being uh, uh, offered up there. Saving a challenge if you get it right, as opposed to having to get both right to get an extra challenge, is being pitched. And the brand new kickoff rule that we went through yesterday is being pitched as well. I think that is most of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, you can challenge their. Uh, at least proposing challenging a penalty call under two minutes mm -hmm. with two minutes left. Yep, the Indianapolis Colts are pitching that one, which is great news. Yep. Uh, I believe that is their thing. The Lions are the ones saying we need to keep our challenges. Yep. Eagles, yep. Eagles wants to add the like second, the tenths of a second to the clock. Which is well. smart, we clock. think. Yeah. We mm -hmm. think that is smart, especially yeah, we have the capability to be able to do that. Yeah. Why not? And also they can see exactly how close you are yeah. to zero, a quarterback, and everything's happening in milliseconds. <clears throat> the whole thing about this weekend, the entire game being changed mightily, if there's a new kickoff, 
and there's a band way of tackling people on the defensive side. Oh. And there's all, it's yeah. like this could be a pretty Loud. consequential NFL owners meetings happening down in Orlando. And with the hip drop, hip drop tackle, like, so that'd be like face mask. Obviously, you know, when you get in a face mask, like a lot of times it's an accident, but you know, the horse collar, you know, like, you know what you're doing there. The hip drop, hip drop tackle is so different. Like, it's, are you going to have to, so say a guy's running inside out towards the sideline and you're right with him. Are you going to have to slow down so that you don't don't put yourself in the situation where you're around the waist? Yeah, are you going to dive in front of them and try to trip big, them up? Yeah. yeah. What is the the style? <laughs> it's going to That's why Sherm goes <clears throat> I would like to see reenactments from the That'd competition awesome. committee at full sprint trying yeah. to do this. Now remember, competition committee does have coaches in there. Mhm. Competition yeah, committee do. does have a lot of people that know football in there, but I assume there's a lot of people in there we've not been there who don't know the football. No. Watch the football. Kids play video games of the football. In theory, this is how this should work. I'll be excited to see if there's a little bit of common sense in the room or not. And if there isn't, on the hip drop tackle. And then if that kickoff gets changed, it's like we got a whole new game of football coming out of the weekend. Well, with this and then like not hitting guys high anymore, and now like with the hip drop tackle stuff, it's almost like they're telling people like, hey, you got a missile in a guy's, you know thigh boards and yeah. like we're just gonna see a bunch of dudes tearing their acls now it seems like which like, we don't love no exactly but like that's basically like how what they're turning into is like hey you got to just cut these guys down at the knees all right we don't need you wrapping them up and you know rolling under their ankles or hitting them high so just blow their knees out and then and then everything's okay and you've heard everybody that's ever played publicly come out and say i'd rather somebody hits me high than in my knees yeah but then the cte thing that happened with dr will smith and the concussions yeah. that take place and the future of players and player safety and everything like that even the nflpa came out against who's grandstands on player safety for everything <laughs> i mean that is the nflpa's leverage that is their trump card in the back pocket whenever they're negotiating with the nfl for anything and the nfl also grandstands on the nflpa is like we are not supporting this hip drop tackle thing. Like, we are the at most adamant player safety and health people, but this is just not good for the game. Like, this is not a good trend to start in this entire thing. We'll see how it goes because allegedly there have been reports, and I think a uh, certain Todd Haley Ooh. maybe even said yeah. this on a show this morning. Todd Haley, former offense coordinator and head coach in the NFL, a man who's been with the Chiefs, the Steelers, the Browns, the UFLs. Yeah. Cardinals. Vipers. Arizona Cardinals. Mm -hmm. He's been on the show before. It's got Moxie. Good football. Got Moxie. Got Good Moxie. football brain. Yeah, and his offenses do well. Mm -hmm. He said, you know, these rules everybody will be against, and somehow go down to the owner's meeting and something happened and now rules get passed and everybody's like, yep, this is good for the game. They just move along. <laughs> yeah. So that is the, what this weekend potentially has, is a lot of like, you don't like it? Well, we're just going to eliminate it entirely, and people are kind of forced to be like, all right, we'll deal with it if we're going to be able to continue to have our jobs, seemingly. So hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully there is a little bit more of a democracy whenever it comes to certain things that are going to change the game entirely. But a lot of shit could potentially change in the league this weekend. You sent in something to the group text last week about like the idea of NFL free agency kind of not being announced in that the season just starts and then you find out where all these you know players went. It would be sweet if they did this with the rules too like if you didn't know there was a new kickoff coming and then opening night you just see showed this, up you just see this brand like kicker on his own all these people over there <laughs> that would be awesome it would be the sweet if, the, if they did oh, that as well. if you were able to keep it a secret yeah no one knew about any of them until opening kick. not even the commentators jim nansen yeah here we <laughs> what oh can you imagine what romo the... what romo would do? oh jim <laughs> yeah. oh, jim what the hell are they doing man <laughs> he's there. Yes. What? Gene, do you know? Can't catch the ball? Gene? Yeah, Gene. Gene, Gene doesn't know. Gene, I, to be honest, we're going to figure this out as we go here, boy. <laughs> Looks Gene, like. Gene's territory used to uh, ref college basketball as well. He was yeah, great he last night. He reminded the yeah. whole world of that. Like, mm -hmm. yeah, I understand I'm the greatest NFL ref of all time, but also check the history. Too pretty, sport pretty good on the hardwood, too. Yeah, I star in college basketball. <laughs> yeah. That's kind Why of don't they vote on full-time refs? That's what they should be voting well, on. Well, because Thank they do all this other bullshit to kind of hi, 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 hi. Yep. You know? And I think full-time refs probably going to have to be a business decision as opposed to a right. competition committee yeah. decision. I do wonder Definitely how that would go through. Felt, but how much do you think, like, and I, I'm going to ask you this question knowing the answer, is this owner's like, hey, I voted for your thing last time. Um, you're going to vote for my thing next time, right? I assume it's politics. There's politics oh, happening in there. Absurd. I assume. Now, there's a lot of new owners, too. True. By a lot, I mean more so than 
there had been Recently, for like 20 yeah. years yeah. or whatever. Yeah. So they're coming in there trying to make allies as well. Yep. Who am I trying to – and that's the one per club meeting mm -hmm. right that they'll never put a camera in no nope. closed doors <clears throat> the, no phone the amount of the amount of oh is that right remember when i oh i remember that this is stupid what are we talking about? a hip drop tackle well he just showed the video of what the rule is dumb i'm off home for it. well you know i lost the guy for blah 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 yeah. like they are in there i bet actually and they all have their own personal agendas Right, because of the team that they have either right now or they have or they're trying to build the quarterback that they have. That's why Bill Burr still holds it over uh, yes. Jim Irsay said mm -hmm. about the rules change. Yeah, you change it because Peyton Manning was your quarterback and the way your offense was, you needed people to get off the wide receiver so they couldn't jam because everything was on timing, so you change the rules. It's like, well, I don't think the Colts were the only team that was constructed that way, no. but they were certainly the most popular at the time they were mm -hmm. constructed that way. It's like these rules and competition committee meetings have such a like lingering effect on the game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because then there's precedent set for things. It's like, that's why the fair catch on the kickoffs last year when it got forced through. Yeah. Everybody's like, wait a minute. We can't just be forcing rules through because then once it's forced through, a couple of years later, remember we did this, not that bad, precedent, we can do this again. It's like, there's got to be checks and balances in there. Well, and that's why NFL is king. Like, the NFL is the only sport where their biggest game happens. And then it's like, hey, by the way, Free agency is about to start. Then they have owners' meetings. Mm -hmm. Littered in there are all these pro days. Like It is the reason the NFL is so massive because every decision they make is huge, and the owners' meetings obviously is the culmination of every – you know, team's biggest player, their owner. You know, like it, it is such a cool thing that happens for the NFL, but obviously, bullshit like this is littered into it. 